Welcome to Ask Dr. Mingle, the Q&A series answering your questions about quality programs and the transition to value-based care. I'm Kyle Breckel. I'm a digital marketing specialist at Mingle Health, and I'll be hosting this episode along with Dr. Dan Mingle, founder and CEO of Mingle Health. Good morning, Dr. Mingle. And good morning, Kyle. Good day to all of you tuning in. It's great to see you again. I am Dr. Dan Mingle. I'm here to answer your questions to the best of my ability. Before we get into our questions, I want to remind our listeners that they can send us their questions. Leave your questions on LinkedIn or YouTube, or you can send us an email at hello at minglehealth.com. Okay, are we ready? I'm ready, Kyle. Both of our questions today come from Daphne. And Daphne's first question is, our practice is participating in ACO REACH. Do our providers have any MIPS requirements? Great question, Daphne. And the answer is a definitive and clear yes and no. Let me try to make that make it definitive and clear. First, ACO REACH is an advanced alternative payment model. It has substantial, way more than nominal upside and downside risk. Your qualified participants in REACH, as in any advanced APM, have no MIPS obligations. But Qualified participant status is not a given. It depends on hitting the benchmarks of beneficiary participation, either by percentage of billing or percentage of patient counts. Each provider who meets or exceeds the volume benchmarks is considered a qualified participant and has no MIPS obligation, not even the ability to opt in. Providers who meet a lower benchmark are considered partial QPs and can choose whether or not to participate in MIPS. Of course, you would like to base that decision on whether the provider will earn a positive or negative adjustment. We at Mingle can help you with that. Any of your providers who do not hit either ACO volume benchmark will have a MIPS obligation. And of course, we can help you with that. They could receive the full 9% downward adjustment if they make no submission. Second, a practice for Participating in ACO REACH does not already include all of its providers. Practice has to be enrolled as a participant, and each provider you want to participate also has to be individually enrolled as a participant. Any provider not enrolled as a participant will have an, a MIPS obligation. Third, there are two different levels of provider REACH involvement. First, is a participating provider. Each participating provider is subject to beneficiary alignment, capitated payment, can be qualified participants. Typically, these will be your primary care providers. MIPS obligation is dependent on QP status, as I've described above. The second level of participation is as a preferred provider. These providers are not subject alignment. They might or might not be capitated. Preferred reach providers cannot be qualified participants, and they are subject to MIPS unless they have another exception, such as the low volume threshold. It's obviously important to know each provider's participation or QP status. This is determined by Medicare quarterly, and each quarterly result is posted on the QPP website at qpp.cms.gov. Thanks, Daphne, for a great question. And Daphne's follow-up question to that, she says, I understand that there are several reasons why providers in our REACH participating practice might need to submit MIPS. So if they do, what are the requirements for them? Great question, Daphne. It won't work the same way in REACH as it works as it used to work and still works in the Medicare Shared Savings Program. In the Medicare Shared Savings Program, before the APP, that is the APM Performance Pathway, the web interface quality submissions both covered both MIPS quality requirements and the MSSP APM quality requirements. Now, under the APP, And during the transition, APP submissions still function in the same way. Non-qualified participants participating in the MSSP can get MIPS quality credit for the MSSP quality submission. But under REACH, there is not a quality submission. There are quality measures. There are four administrative claims measures that Medicare calculates for REACH ACOs and the CAP survey is required for all participants. In the last question, I described when REACH-involved providers will have a MIPS obligation. First, 
your practice providers who are not participants in the REACH ACO. Second, your practice providers who are only preferred, preferred providers in the REACH ACO. These will likely be your specialty providers. Third, your participating providers who are not QPs or partial QPs. And finally, your partial QP providers who elect for, to participate in MIPS. Your safe assumption would be that all four of these categories will need a full MIP submission to avoid negative adjustments. I say safe to mean worst case scenario. As new program, Medicare will recognize holes in the rules and unintended consequences they will correct on the fly. There may already be rulings published that I've not yet seen or rules yet to be published that will change these expectations. When you run across anything, I will be grateful if you would share it with me. As I run across new findings, I'll bring it uh, to this forum. Many exceptions to the rules may be highly dependent on your specific circumstances and the conditions of your specific REACH ACO contract with CMS. If you engage us, we will help you sort through the myriads of questions and circumstances and seek with you anticipatory guidance from Medicare. My current expectation by performance category, cost. I expect your non-REACH providers to be subject to the usual MIPS cost measures that Medicare will calculate for you from claims. Second, about the quality performance category. The REACH quality measures that allow you to collect your REACH quality withhold are not MIPS measures. The one possible exception is the CAPS survey. Plan on a traditional or an MVP MIPS submission for your non-QPs. Third, Improvement activities. I expect your partial QPs and non-QP REACH participating providers to get full IA credit for REACH participation. I expect your REACH preferred providers and non-participating providers to need improvement activity submissions. Finally, promoting operability. All, you've, all of your providers subject to MIPS will need a full promoting interoperability submission. Thanks, I hope that answers most of your questions, Daphne. Again, great question. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Daphne. And a reminder again, if you have a question for Dr. Mingle, leave it in a comment on LinkedIn or YouTube or send it directly to us at hello at minglehealth.com. And thank you, Dr. Mingle, for sharing your insight with us today. Thanks to you, Kyle. And thanks, Daphne, for all the great questions. I want to be helpful and I want this to be useful to you. Don't hesitate to correct or supplement my answers. Share your experience. Ask your questions. We can be smarter together.